Well, hey there. If you have ever been interested in trying prescription retin-A, ever been interested in starting a prescription retinoid treatment like tretinoin, if you've been afraid to start a prescription retinoid product like tretinoin, if you have tried a prescription tretinoin or retinol product, but you could not stick with it, then this video is probably for you. So stick around because we're about to get right into it. Hi, I'm Mona. Today we're talking about prescription tretinoin primarily, what it's for, why you might want to use it, and how you can get started on it. According to the FDA, Retin-A is a vitamin A derivative available only by prescription. It is one of the only products that has been proven and approved to reverse the signs of skin damage. There is multiple research that indicates tretinoin, the active ingredient in Retin-A, is effective in combating photoaging or the effects that sun does to your skin. So tretinoin is one of the most science-backed anti-aging ingredients. It thickens the dermis of your skin and it exfoliates the epidermis of your skin. The result is that it leaves your skin pink, glowy, and with less wrinkles and fine lines. It's also effective against acne and hyperpigmentation, but today we're talking about the effects that Retin-A has on anti-aging. So despite the fact that this product can undo the effects of photoaging, reverse some of the damage that you've gotten along the years from sun, it doesn't come without its pitfalls. Primarily those are redness, peeling, irritation, itchiness, flaking, and sometimes painful skin. And that's usually the number one reason why people are either afraid to start it or the reason that they don't stick with it. And the only way to really get lasting, true benefits from this is with consistency and time. So patience is definitely required to get the full effects of a prescription Retin-A. You've probably heard of or experienced yourself the redness, the peeling, the horror stories associated with prescription Retin-A. However, it's not necessary for the majority of the people to experience this. And the benefits of prescription tretinoin are not dependent on those side effects. You can get the benefits of this product without having the negative consequences if you follow some basic steps. If you're like me, you've probably watched numerous videos on Retin-A on YouTube. I know I have. When I was first interested in starting this, I went to YouTube to find out what was the best advice. And I came across many wonderful YouTube ladies who had great advice and helped steer me in the right direction, but I also came across some really crazy information. Some that was just a little bit off of what is actually fact and some that were way off the beaten path. So what qualifies me to bring you this video today on how to start your Retin-A journey? Well, I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. So now I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not why. What qualifies me to come to you today to talk about starting a Retin-A journey is that I have just been on Retin-A for under two years. So my experience with it and coming to a successful point in my journey is fresh and new. I have three degrees. I have a Bachelor of Science degree, I have two Master's degrees, and all three of them contained classes on how to read a research study. If we were getting scammed or if we were being directed to a true research article that had validity. And the way we know that is by asking some questions. Actually do the research. Talk to your physician for one. Nobody's going to give you better information on whether or not prescription tretinoin is right for you than your physician or your dermatologist. Second, do your own research. Look into it. What are you looking for in a research article? You're looking for double-blinded studies. That's where both the people who are getting the placebo and the people who are getting the actual tretinoin product Neither one of them know which side of the equation they're on. If the person knows that they're getting the placebo, they're more likely to not be compliant with the program. And your testing results are usually skewed. The other thing is follow the money. Who's paying for the study? Who's going to receive a financial reward 
if the product does well. Those are some indicators. Is there biases in the research article? And if you don't feel like getting into these research articles, I've done the homework for you. And that's what I'm giving you today in this video. I'm giving you information based on one, my personal experience and my education, and two, based on research that I have done diligently over time to bring you the most accurate facts. How can you get Retin-A? You can get prescription Retin-A if you're in the United States pretty easily from a dermatologist or your GP. It is never too late to start Retin-A and it is never too early. Teens are given Retin-A for the purposes of acne. So if it's prescribed by your doctor, you really don't have an age limit to using it. If you don't want to go to your dermatologist or your physician, there are other companies that are online that do give you prescription product Retin-A. These are companies like Curology, and I'll list some other ones in the description below, that you actually have to fill out a questionnaire, you have to send pictures to them, you have either a physician or a physician's assistant or a nurse practitioner contact you back and actually interview you sort of over the phone, ask you some personal questions, get a medical history, and prescribe something according to that. Let's talk about a few facts. One, unless you're gonna use Retin-A with sunscreen, there's no use even getting started on the journey. Sunscreen is an anti-ager probably your number one anti-ager. It prevents your skin from aging. What Retin-A is doing is removing the aging that has occurred or the damage that has occurred to your skin primarily from sun damage. So if you wanna remove that sun damage but yet you're not preventing future sun damage by using a sunscreen, you're kind of canceling the Retin-A out. I do wanna give you a couple of cautions. Or overseas companies that sell prescription Retin-A to you, like Reliable Rx. I know a lot of people who use that. Uh, companies in India, companies in Canada, that, or Mexico. Sometimes we'll have friends who go out of country. It is sold legally there over the counter, and so they pick up some and they're nice enough to share it with you. If you decide to go that route, I wanna give you the caution to make sure that you do let your primary care physician and your dermatologist know that you are using that, especially your primary care physician. You wanna have that listed in your list of medications. Because although it's topical, it is a drug. And drugs can be absorbed through your skin. If it can't be absorbed through your skin, it's not gonna be effective. And although for the most part, the only negative effects that you're gonna get with the retin product are peeling and irritation and redness, like I said before, it is possible that you can have other negative outcomes like neurotoxicity. There's only a couple of studies that refer to that but there was a person that had obviously used this topically at high doses and liberally on their face, and they had a history of liver toxicity already and liver damage, and they had some effects from this. But because they had not obtained this through a prescription from their physician, and they had not listed this as current medications, their physician didn't even look that way for a possible connection between the tretinoin use and the symptoms that the patient was having because it wasn't in their medical record. So just don't take that to be afraid. For the majority of people, this is very safe. Just use it as a cautionary measure to make sure that your physician does know if you're using this without a prescription from them. Even if you're getting it from a place like Curology, you wanna make sure that it's on your physician's medical history for you. So some people have no difficulty using this product whatsoever. From day one, they can put it on their skin, their skin tolerates it well, they rarely have any redness, any tightness, any sensitivity, any peeling, any irritation. That does not mean that it's not working for them, they can still get the same benefits. Side effects do not equal effectiveness when it comes to Retin-A. So here are my tips for starting a Retin-A journey and being able to stick to it. Start low and go slow. Start at a low percentage. Generally, prescription tretinoin comes in ranges from 0.2% to 
0.1%. With the 0.1% being on the high side, you wanna start with the recommended dose by your physician. But generally, don't ask to go in with a high amount. Patience is the key. My first recommendation is to start at a low dose and to use it once a week. Increase to two times a week, then increase to three times a week, then increase to four times a week, then increase to five times a week, then increase to six times a week. And if you are tolerating that, then go up on the strength. Another bit of information is sometimes your skin can look worse before it looks better, but it's not necessary for that to happen. Your skin can become so dry that you look 10 years older than you actually are instead of looking younger. That defeats the purpose of why you're starting Retin-A in the first place. So start low and go slow. You don't have to have all of that damage to your skin. Build up a tolerance, pace yourself, and that way you don't have to look worse before you look better. So tip three, if you have sensitivity when you're using it one or two times a week you're finding that your face is red or it feels like it burns or it's irritated and uncomfortable and you're not having a pleasant sensation with that before you apply it mix it with a moisturizer i recommend dermatology soothe and recovery cream this is a duly formulated moisturizer that calms and repairs irritated skin, specifically from retinoid products and AHAs and BHAs, you know, your lactic acid, your alpha hydroxy acids. So this is formulated to reduce the redness and irritation that you get from products and strong actives in your skincare. I would take a pump of this. I would take a pump of my tretinoin. I would mix them together so that they're blended. And then I would apply to my skin. You want to avoid hot spots or areas of intense concentration. That's the next tip. So you want to tap it on all over and then rub it in so that it's apply equally and you don't have higher concentrations in one area than another that way you're avoiding that irritation this dermatology soothe and recovery cream is awesome for sunburn it's aw awesome for chemical irritations and it really does help you get established on a tretinoin regime without the negative side effects it helps the skin maintain its natural structure and it does that by increasing the moisture in your skin over 24 hours by 150 percent it's light it's easily absorbed and it can be used by all skin types so tip four short contact therapy i had mentioned that earlier that is where you go in and you apply your tretinoin product for half an hour all over your face and then you wash it off and you can do that three times a week four times a week five times a week you can do it seven days a week if that's the only way that you can tolerate tretinoin, you are still getting the benefits from it. So if you use the short contact time therapy approach, you can increase your time, like from a half an hour and wash it off to an hour and wash it off to an hour and a half and wash it off like that. But you may never get to a point where you leave it on all night because your skin is sensitive. You're still getting the effects. It's still penetrating your skin and it's still causing you to increase your levels of collagen, thicken that dermis, and exfoliate your epidermis. So it is still beneficial in reducing the effects of photoaging and worth doing. Tip five, when you first start using a prescription tretinoin product or an over-the-counter retinol, you wanna make sure that you're avoiding any other irritating factor at the same time. So you wanna go in with a gentle cleanser. I recommend the CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser. This keeps your, your moisture barrier intact. Or I recommend the Dermatology Essential 11 Hydrating Cleanser. This one, in addition to containing your rich anti-aging peptide complex, it also contains 
botanical extracts that can soothe and calm your skin. The peptides that are included in this help lock in hydration as well. So you wanna avoid cleansers that have salicylic acids in it, AHAs, BHAs, any kind of acid, any kind of vitamin C, any kind of irritating substance. And at the same time, you don't wanna use your vitamin Cs or your alpha hydroxy acids during the introduction phase of your prescription tretinoin. Eventually you can get to that, but at the very beginning when you're trying to build up that tolerance, it's called retinization. There's actually a name for that. That period of time where you're building your tolerance and getting used to the effects of the product. Usually takes about six weeks. And if you go slow and start low, Generally within six weeks, you're able to reintroduce those other products to your skincare routine. But you don't want to use it right away. You don't want to use it until you're tolerating your prescription tretinoin perfectly. Again, you want to use sunscreen. There's no use using a product that is going to reverse the signs of sun damage if you're not protecting yourself when you go out in the sun. In addition, because your skin is more sensitive from using this product, the exposure of sunlight can irritate your skin even more. You're more prone to having a sunburn or the effects of the sun while using this product. So the two should go hand in hand. Moisturize. Make sure that you are moisturizing. Once again, I recommend that you use the Soothe and Recovery Cream by Dermatology. Whether you're mixing the tretinoin in this or you're using this first before you go in with the tretinoin or you're using this after you apply the tretinoin and also make sure that you're using a good moisturizer like this in the morning. Tip eight, if your skin does peel, don't mess with it. It's the easiest way to describe it. Don't try to peel that skin off. Let it be and add moisturizer. Don't say, oh, let me go exfoliate. It is exfoliating. That's why your skin is peeling. That skin is sloughing off. It's gonna do that on its own. It does not need you to go in and irritate your skin anymore. Let it be and just apply your moisturizer on top of that peeling skin. Lock in that hydration and it will go away on its own. Tip number nine is not to apply tretinoin to wet skin when you're introducing it. Wet skin enhances penetration. It enhances absorption of the actives in your products. So you wanna make sure that your skin is completely dry before you go in with a prescription tretinoin product. Tip 10 we've already covered and that is that you're gonna either dot it all around and avoid those areas of intense concentration or you're gonna cut it and dilute that strength by mixing it with a moisturizing agent. So that's it. Those are my tips for introducing Tretinoin Retin-A prescription strength into your skincare routine. You wanna pay attention to the vehicle that the Tretinoin is in. Creams are gonna be easier to use if you use an oil base like an ointment those are gonna be stronger because, or if you use a gel, those are gonna be stronger because that vehicle is gonna evaporate off and it's gonna leave just the tretinoin or just the retinol. And so therefore the effects and the absorption is gonna be more intense. I started low and I went slow. I started with 0.025%. I started one time a week. The second week I went up to twice a week the third week, I went up to three times a week. Then I stayed there for a couple of weeks until I had no irritation. I mixed my tretinoin half and half with moisturizer. I never had massive peeling. I never experienced serious redness. The worst that I got was slight tightness. You know, where I wake up in the morning and my skin feels a little dry and a little tight. Nothing that the moisturizer didn't cure. I have very sensitive skin. I did get chapped lips sometimes. So I kept my lips lubricated with some type of sunscreen and lip product. And I kept sunscreen on my face every day. And my effects have been a tighter, brighter appearance to my skin. Has it made me look 20? No. Over time, I think I'll see even more results because Slower is better, and that's what I've been doing. 
I have not been in a, in a big hurry. I've just been using it in a way that does not give me those intense side effects. And over time, I'm seeing the benefits. Let me know what your thoughts are on prescription strength tretinoin. Have you used it? Or are you using an over-the-counter retinol? I think for most people, you want to use one or the other if you're interested in anti-aging your skin. Also, if you just have tried all of these tips and it's just not for you, I would recommend an actual vitamin A in the form of rosehip seed oil. I really like the one by Bioscience. I will have that link below. I really like the one by Good Molecules. But you want to keep your expectations reasonable even with a prescription tretinoin. It's not a magic potion. You're not going to get true, amazing, age-defying results unless you have laser or you have plastic surgery or in-office procedures. But you can get good, reasonable results at home. This is the route that I choose and I'm very happy with my results. So until next time, stay safe and live like Mel.